Mr. President, uh, I, I would uh, rise today to speak to the, to the issue that the Senate is going to be considering now for the next couple of days and ultimately voting on. Uh, it sounds like uh, possibly sometime on Saturday, and that is the cut, cap, and balance proposal that has been put forward by the House of Representatives. The House uh, passed this particular proposal uh, night before last. It is now uh, pending under consideration in the Senate. And what I would suggest to my colleagues in the Senate is this. It is the only proposal out there. It is the only plan that we have to vote on. Uh, we've had now over 800 days, 813 I think is the, uh, is the correct number of days now, 813 days, uh, since uh, a budget was passed in the United States Senate. The Democrat majority has not submitted one for consideration here. We've not had votes on a budget. Uh, so we've been operating without a budget. There is no plan. The House of Representatives, on the other hand, passed a budget earlier this year. Uh, it was criticized by, uh, by many uh, uh, people here, Democrats, uh, as, as being something they didn't want to support. But there wasn't an alternative put forward by the Senate Democrats nor by the President. And I should say the President did put a, a budget forward in his annual budget release earlier this year. But when the Senate voted on that, they voted it down 97 to 0. There wasn't a single member of the United States Senate, Republican or Democrat, who voted in favor of the President's budget proposal. Why? Because it uh, raised spending, it raised the debt by almost doubled the debt over the next 10 years, and increased taxes by uh, over a trillion dollars. Those were all, I think, elements that you don't want to have in a budget when you've got a down economy. You want to get spending under control, reduce spending. You want to do, put a plan in place that starts uh, getting a trajectory in place that would start reducing the amount of debt that we have as a nation. You certainly don't want to raise taxes in an economic downturn when you're dealing with 9.2 percent unemployment. So that's uh, the, the only budget submission that we have seen uh, from the President, and as I said, uh, there hasn't been anything in the context of this debt limit debate uh, put forward by uh, the Democrats here in the Senate uh, or the President. So the only proposal we have in front of us is the cut, cap, and balance proposal that was passed by the House of Representatives and sent to the Senate. Uh, you can say that the, the House, uh, arguably, has done its work. They've done their job. They have put forward uh, a plan that we, uh, that we need to act on. But to suggest for a minute that there isn't uh, an alternative that Republicans are being unreasonable in all this, I think completely misses the point, Mr. President, because it is the only plan out there. If you don't like that one, where is your plan? Where is the budget? We've had 813 days now without a budget. We don't have a plan for dealing with the debt limit either put forward by the President or the Senate Democrats. Uh, what we have to vote on and what we have to consider and to debate today is the cut, cap, and balance proposal. Now, that's significant for a number of reasons. Uh, one, I believe that the way to deal with the, the crisis that we have uh, in this country today, a debt crisis that gets worse by the day, is to get spending under control. I believe fundamentally, Mr. President, the problem that we have in this country is not a question of not enough revenue. It is a question of too much spending. Uh, government has gotten too big. It has grown too fast. Uh, it is spinning out of control, I think, in the minds of most Americans, and they want to see us rein it in and get government spending and debt under control. Now, I, I read uh, yesterday on the floor, but I want, I want to uh, re read it again. Uh, ironically, a letter I got from a Boy Scout in South Dakota who was earning his merit badge, and he wrote me a letter. And he said, and I quote, I feel that the federal government needs a balanced budget. If we don't get the debt, if the, we don't, the debt gets larger each year. I feel there are two solutions for this. In our house, we are careful to only spend what my mom and dad earn. That needs come first and what is left is for wants. Many times we were told no when we asked for something. With my allowance and lawn mowing money, I divide it between donations, saving, and spending. I can't spend more than I make." End quote. Now, I think there are a couple of very powerful uh, observations in, this, in, in that statement, Mr. President. The first is, is obviously that uh, it's not lost on even this young American how important it is that you live within your means, that you can't spend money that you don't have. That's clearly a lesson that he has already learned that, uh, that we need to learn, learn here in Washington, D.C. Secondly, is how profoundly this issue impacts the next generation. If, in fact, we fail to act to get spending and debt under control and to put us on a sustainable fiscal course, the next generation is going to pay a powerful price for uh, our irresponsibility. And I would submit again to my colleagues, Mr. President, that this is fundamentally a spending issue. 
A lot of folks have talked about the need for more revenue. The president talks about wanting more revenue. The, uh, the majority leader got up and just said, you know, that the House is out of town and how that's terrible because uh, re revenue measures have to originate in the House of Representatives. Well, many of, us, many of us believe this can be solved without more revenue, that we don't have to raise taxes on the American people or American small businesses to solve what is inherently and fundamentally a spending problem. Now, if we want to balance our budget, it means we've got to get spending under control. There have been five times since 1969 when the budget was balanced in this country. Each, in each case, the average amount that we spent was just under 18.7% of our gross domestic product. So that's kind of the, the benchmark for times, the five times in our nation's history when, since 1969 when the budget has actually been balanced, 18.7% of GDP. GDP. The, the 20 or the 40 year average, I should say, of uh, spending to GDP in this country is 20.6%. That's the 40 year average. The five times when we balanced the budget, it was 18.7% of GDP. Well, what are we spending this year? 24.3% uh, of GDP. And if you look at the president's budget, and I think even what are, in my view, uh, optimistic uh, assumptions about economic growth, you're still looking at that sort of a course for the foreseeable future. And I think with the, uh, what I think are going to be the imploding, uh, exploding costs of, uh, of the health care bill that was passed last year, I think it could be much higher than that. But my point simply is this. If you can balance your budget at 18.7 percent federal spending as a percentage of GDP, and we are spending at 24.3 percent this year, we are 30 percent higher in terms of what we spend than those times in which we were able to balance the budget. So it's clearly, in my view, if you're talking about getting your budget balanced, it means getting spending under control, reining in out of control Washington spending. Now, um, I've, I've argued for a long time and, uh, that we need not only what is proposed in the cut, cap, and balance bill in, the, in terms of an immediate reduction in spending, caps on spending in the future years, but also a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution, something I've campaigned on my entire political career. Uh, why? Because I believe it is so necessary. Uh, Washington has not demonstrated in the past the political courage that's necessary to get spending under control. And as a consequence, we now have a federal debt that's over $14 trillion, and we're actually talking about raising the borrowing authority uh, of this country simply because we get further and further into debt. Every year we're running $1 trillion uh, deficits, and at that rate, you're obviously going to continue to accumulate enormous amounts of debt. So it means getting your budget balanced. Well, we don't do that around here. Uh, most states do. There are 49 states who have some form of balanced budget amendment that requires them to make sure that their spending does not exceed the amount of revenue they have coming in. Uh, I think that's needed here. When I first got to the Congress back in, as a freshman congressman in 1997, there was a vote in the United States Senate on a balanced budget amendment. It failed by one vote. It needs two-thirds votes in the House and the Senate. Then it has to be sent to the states for ratification. If 38 states ratify it, uh, it would be amended to the Constitution. And we would have a requirement that the federal government balance its budget, just like so many states have to do every single year. Well, that vote in the Senate in 1997, it failed by one vote. It got 66 votes here in the Senate one short of the 67 necessary to send it on to the House. At that time, I was a member of the House of Representatives. Had the Senate passed it, sent it to the House, I believe we would have gotten a two-thirds majority in the House of Representatives and been able to send it on to the states. Well, that's 15 years ago. Uh, what's happened in the last 15 years? At that time, the cumulative debt was $5 trillion. Today, it is $14 trillion. We have seen a $9 trillion increase in the amount of debt. And I can't help but thinking, had we had a balanced budget amendment in place, how much better off we would be today. The cut, cap, and balance approach, Mr. President, strikes at the very heart of the issue. And that is that this is a fundamentally a spending issue that needs to be addressed in the near term by cutting spending this year, capping spending in, in, in future years, and putting in place that mechanism that enforces or requires Congress to have the discipline that's necessary to balance the budget for future generations. Uh, Mr. President, I hope we will get an affirmative vote when that time comes and that my colleagues will join me in supporting a measure that I think will get this country back on a sustainable fiscal track and create greater prosperity for uh, not only our generation, but future generations as well. Mr. President, I yield the floor.